for being here, both of you. James, obviously, you've been a freedom fighter throughout this entire COVID pandemic. But Scotland remains in the clutch of Nicola Sturgeon and she wants these restrictions to continue. I think it's now at the point of ridiculous control and a bit of coercion. And I'm slightly saddened and a little bit confused by this. Now, I'm symp- the reason I'm confused is I'm sympathetic to the independence argument. Now, the whole point of independence in Scotland is about setting Scotland free. And yet the paradox of what she's doing is she's doing the exact opposite. She's, keep, she's destroying freedoms in Scotland. She's locking people in. We're at a point, as Drakeford was saying, following the science. We're following the science. We shouldn't be following the SAGE models because they've been completely wrong. It's not about following the science. It's about following the data. The data is stating right now that we're in a position because of this variant – and a very different position in terms of hospitalizations and deaths compared to, say, this time last year, that we should be unlocking. And if we don't unlock now completely, and that means losing all the restrictions, and in Scotland, ending the emergency powers, taking the masks off kids in school, and ending vaccine passports, at what point does Scotland truly get free? And that is a huge concern for me. Professor Lomonosov, James has a point, doesn't he? Because actually, if you look at the rates of covid in Wales, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland, actually, on the whole, they've been higher than England. So these restrictions haven't actually worked. Yes, I mean, it's an interesting thing. And, but I have a, uh, this concept of, you know, that all the restrictions we're under. I actually find, from a day-to-day life, they're actually extremely mild. And I point out that the plan in England is maybe to remove them in two weeks' time, and from that clip from Nicholas Sturgeon, it was in three weeks' time. So they're actually rather, rather similar. Um, and I don't know, um, I don't live in Scotland, um, you know, even though there's, there's still you know, uh, precautions and uh, uh, recently uh, uh, about you, the change of advice about wearing masks, to be honest, just going about daily life, it doesn't feel as if anything is really other than fairly normal. So I don't think this is such a big difference. In what about the muzzles? Fact. What about those muzzle things over your face? That has been shown. Um, and they're not really muzzles. Muzzles are just designed to stop you biting people. I don't think that's what they're designed to do in this case. It's just to filter out and, and try to prevent you infecting other one else. I, I, anyone else. I don't think... But you the know, science you doesn't back them up, them. Does, it, George, does it, Professor? The science doesn't back them up. Not the cloth masks. Uh, well, no, I mean, obviously, they do something, and the higher grades, of course, do better, but they can be uncomfortable to wear for long periods. So like all these things, it is a bit of a compromise in practicality and having to go about your other business. It's almost a saying, unless you can do the perfect, don't do anything. And so we have that, that situation where you try and do something which is, you can do quite easily and will make a difference. Not perfect but rather than have to wear these rather more protective ones, which are a bit uncomfortable. 